Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick heads up. The second Global Product Owner Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. And it's all lowercase, all one word. Oh, and uh, stick with us until the end of the episode to know the dates and the tracks that we have for you in this year's summit. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Inga Bergman. Hey, Inga, welcome back. Hello. Nice to see you again. Absolutely. So Team Tuesday is, of course, about the teams. But before we dive into that, do share with us What's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? I'm not sure if it's really the one that most influenced me, but it is one book that really helped me in my first steps being a Scrum Master. And I think it has been mentioned here on the podcast at least once before. Uh, it's Esther Jervis and Diana Larson's Agile Retrospectives, Making Good Teams Great. Uh, it's kind of the... I don't want to say it's the retro Bible, but probably somehow it's it, it's something like that. And it, it's really like uh, when I was starting being a Scrum Master, it was obviously one of the first things I was asked to do. Can you facilitate our retro? Uh, and, and from what I um, know from other peers, they have the same experience. And this is always one of the first things you get handed over because what, is, what Scrum Masters do, they do retros. So um why it was so, so cool for me to read and experience is that it helped me to understand how I can create a space for teams to reflect both in a structured way, but also in playful ways. So, but using the playful thing, but with it, with intention to get some structure to, to get to something better. And it helped me to, to understand how I can help people to step out of the daily grind and how, um, how they can change their default perspectives to others to understand better what's going on and 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 um, really understand their context and and move forward from that with with an idea how they can make things different and best case better. Absolutely, and it's a book that has, as you said, has been referred to before. And retrospectives are a critical aspect, critical space for us as Scrum Masters. So definitely a, a great recommendation. And, and of course, we do those retrospectives to help teams, but sometimes not even with our help, they get better. And uh, eventually, some teams do end up self-destructing. So let's explore one of those stories and understand what might drive that kind of dynamic. So tell us the story of a team you were working with, Inga, and tell us a little bit about the context but then describe for us those little behaviors, patterns, things that the team did that eventually led to problems. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot about this question and um, I couldn't come up with this story I can tell, but I've realized that I've seen one or two patterns in the past in different teams um, that I would like to look into a little bit more. And um, one thing that I have seen or when I say it, it sounds very like very not so bad, but if it becomes a habit, it can really be a destructive pattern is when people are not raising their voice, when they sense that something is off. And even if it's only a little thing, I think it's, so let's say there is there's a team working together and someone feels like, huh, it feels different than it has been feeling like two weeks ago. And, and I, I cannot really say what it is, but still I have that sense. And um, they then have that choice, taking the responsibility to state that and say, hey, folks, do you feel, I can't say it really what it is, but do you, do you feel the same? So do some sort of a sanity check. But then they rather say, oh, well, maybe it's just me and I, I don't talk about it. But then it grows and grows and it gets bigger. And at some point it has become one of those uh, maybe still unspoken conflict, but then there is a big tension in the team. And that's when it's usually too late to, to, to solve it in a constructive way, but sometimes it then get, really gets this. this, uh, this when you think about this pattern, what, in your experience, what are the things that drive people to take that approach of not raising their voice even when they feel things are off? Yeah. I think there, there are different, different 
things why they maybe don't do it. It could be, of course, that they don't feel safe enough anymore to raise it. So maybe there's been something like a like change in the team or they've had a bad experience. So they they just think it's uh, they, they don't feel safe to raise it and rather shy away from doing it. Um, but this could also be that um, it's really just a small thing and they rather think, oh, it's only me. So they, it's it's just me. It's it's not them. It's it's me. It's my fault. So I I don't and and they they're not aware that this. If they think it, that others might think it as well. So so not having this uh, sense of um, that we all feel this sort of nuances in, in our day to days. And yeah. what was the second anti pattern you had in mind? Mm. I think that's connected to that as well. So when, when we have those things where um, there are things happening that we do not know how what it is. Actually, we don't have the words. We cannot grasp it. But um, rather than stating it, sometimes we just fill in the gaps in our mind. So rather than talking with other people, we fill in the blanks. And, and then we went, go into this, come into that state where then we rather say it's it's them who are to blame rather than talking about how can we solve it. So we, I think we've all seen, or we know those situations, let's say we, we have this retrospective and then we talk about a big, big issue that is somehow there. And then at the end we talk, okay, what can we do now? Oh, it's not us, it's them. They have to change something. They have to do deliver something to us so that we will be unblocked and we can do something. But I think, um, that this is where people do not take up the responsibility to to see and look into how what they actually can do to make make a change at first. Uh, thinking of the circle of influences where you have the, the area where you can do something, but of course there's something where it's out of our control. But but rather than being in this state of unproductive blaming others, rather go into the productive and constructive way of thinking. What can we do to spark the change? What's in our control? It's not only, uh, it will be more motivating for people as well, but there's usually always something that we can do ourselves. For me, the, the key aspect here is that when we fill in the blanks and we kind of complete the story without asking or raising the topic or seeing other people's perspective, we usually, not always, but usually go on to this worst case scenario thinking. Right. And, and that actually exacerbates, augments conflict. If there is an opportunity for conflict and we fill in the details ourselves, then conflict will definitely emerge. Uh, very often what happens is that when we raise the topic and we, we hear the other person's perspective, we, we see things with different, with different eyes and, and it's not a conflict anymore. We understand why cer certain things happen, but this filling in the blanks with our own narrative can be uh, a self-fulfilling prophecy of disaster, right? Because it, it can create tensions where there's no reason for tensions to exist. Totally agree on that, yes. Great story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Inga. You're welcome. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around and listening to the details of the Product Owner Summit, this year's global summit dedicated to a critical scrum role, the product owner role, of course, we'll have some amazing keynotes and four tracks filled with firsthand stories and experiences for product owners to learn more about that critical scrum role. The summit will take place between April 23rd and 25th. So book your calendars. There will be loads of sessions for you to attend. One of the keynotes will be Dave West, the product owner and CEO at Scrum.org, one of the largest Scrum organizations in the world. If you want to know more, check out the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. We will also have four tracks the four tracks we'll cover, cross-functional product ownership, that's track one, as uh, Pixar's Ratatouille said, not every idea can be a great idea, but a great idea can come from anywhere. And this quote emphasizes the importance of a product owner being open to all ideas, regardless of the source, and also challenges us to 
focus on getting good ideas from everywhere and involving the whole team in the product owner role and responsibilities. The second track is designing products for growth, where we explore how to craft products ready for scalable growth, merging practical strategies with innovation. The idea here is to learn to design products for growth, whether it is sales or customer acquisition. The third track is know your users, user-centric approaches for agile development. In this track, we learn to master user-centric techniques in agile development, to deeply understand customer needs and transform insights into meaningful UX designs that focus on engagement and satisfaction. This is a track ideal for innovation-focused agile teams. And the fourth track, one of the most exciting tracks, in my opinion, is product development with AI, ideas for product owners. Not only do we discuss about using AI in the products, but also AI for product owners to learn to make a bigger impact with the help of the AI tools that we already have. The Product Owner Summit will also present to you great opportunities to network with your peers. So get your ticket and join our Slack. You can get the ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. As always, we have free tickets and also the paid tickets that help to support this podcast. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all lowercase, all one word, product owner 2024. I'll see you in the summit floor. <laughs>